Are lab-grown diamonds really the secret to happiness? So you're hunting for a dazzling lab-grown diamond. Today I'm going to tell you 10 things you really need to know before you buy a diamond, especially like how much money should I spend or am I getting taken advantage? A lot of these things you really need to know and you're going to learn some very valuable information. Tip number one, don't be scammed. Some jewelry stores love to slap on outrageous prices because people don't know. They don't know what they should be paying for a lab-grown diamond. It doesn't come anywhere near the price of a regular one. So if they see it half price, they think, wow, I'm saving so much money. God's honest truth, you're not saving so much money. You could be saving a ton more if you just knew. That's what I'm gonna tell you about right now. Tip number two, this is how much you should pay for a lab grown diamond right now. Today we're gonna go with rounds, by the way. The prices on other shapes may vary a little bit. Actually, most other shapes are, in natural diamonds, 15% less. And if they tell you, oh, that shape's really hard to get, it's gonna cost you more, they're just trying to ream you again and charge you too much. Right now, let's dig into it, okay? I'm gonna tell you what a natural diamond, you know, one carat, two carat, three carat should cost and a lab-grown diamond should cost. I just looked this up just today. Right now, a lab-grown one-carat diamond, $1,200. It's It's got a range of 1,200 to 2,000. Now, if it was a natural diamond, natural diamond in that same range, and it's $6,500 on average for a one-carat round earth-grown diamond. Huge difference, okay? Second one is a two-carat, which happens to be pretty close to the most popular size. So a two carat diamond, 2,500 to 3,500. That's what you should be paying for a two carat, really killer lab grown diamond. A two carat natural diamond, on average right now is $28,000. Would you really wanna pay $28,000? You know, if you're trying to save a few bucks and you're a young couple and you wanna get her something that she really deserves, you're actually buying a real diamond. It just happens to be grown in a laboratory instead of in the earth. Three carat, the savings is, is phenomenal, it's stupid. Lab grown diamond is between 3,000 and 6,000. Now if it was a natural diamond, on average, no joke, three carat, $63,000. Tip number three, the diamond hunt begins. What I recommend really is going to your local jeweler, whether that is an independent store or to a mall or something like that. Go in, get some information, get some prices, see what kind of inventory they have. Many of them can get in diamonds for you so you can compare. This is a key point. The reason why I don't recommend buying online is because you could get one diamond. It comes in and you're saying, oh, I think that looks good, chill like that, but you don't really have anything to compare it to. It's not like they sent you five stones and you say, wow, this one looks the best. The one that looks the best might actually cost the least amount of money because it weighs two points less. And those slight differences can mean a lot of money. You could actually save money and pick a better stone by seeing them in person. Second is, you know what? I've been in business for over 30 years. We will help you any way we can. If you find a diamond at another store and you wanna know if you're being treated fairly or you don't know who to go to and you want us to help you. We're happy to help you anywhere from giving you an education to selling you a diamond. Tip number four. Yeah, I hate this saying. Size matters. But honest to God, in many ways size matters. A, a girl loves to be able to show off her diamond. A girl likes to be walking from across the street and having that diamond sparkle and you sit there and go, wow, can you see her ring? That's the only thing that you can notice from that far away. What's the most popular size? Honest to God, for a lab grown diamond, the most popular size is about two carats. I'd say anywhere between two and three. You know, a lot of times that's in a lot of people's budgets, but at the same time, it's something that you feel they deserve. If you bring her with you, into a store. Most likely, most women <laughs> typically always pick a larger diamond. It's just because they want it to be seen. They want everybody to know she's with you. Bring her in or surprise her. If you got her a two carat and she says, boy, it's wonderful, but I really wish it was a three or a different shape. If you get it from a store like me or another independent store, most likely they have the same policy I do. We just take it back and get you the right diamond. All right, so now we're on to number five. A lab grown diamonds really better. All right, so this is a controversial statement because for thousands of years, hundreds of years, people have been using natural diamonds. They haven't been taking in lab grown diamonds, but lab grown diamonds are, I mean, literally, I've got 35 years 
of jewelry store experience and I can tell you right now I can't tell the difference because they're both diamonds it just so happens one came out of the ground the other one was grown from a little tiny diamond and they grow into a bigger diamond a lab grown diamond actually by law has to say lab grown on the girdle of the stone that's one of the only ways to identify it you know 20 30 even 40 years old and it's just not in your budget to spend twenty thousand dollars for a two carat diamond so you go with a two thousand dollar lab grown diamond and guess what it looks phenomenal i think a lab grown diamond is better if you don't have the money for it there is definitely a place for natural diamonds just in this place right now if you're starting out it, it is a good decision to number six are lab grown diamonds really better for the environment this is another controversial thing because i'll tell you what everybody thinks oh i'm gonna save the earth i'm gonna buy a lab grown diamond i hate to tell you you're not saving the earth by buying a lab grown diamond mining to get diamonds out of the earth hurts the earth lab grown diamonds are using tremendous amount of chemicals now they do have a lot of protections involved in making sure that it is safe for you to breathe and 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 everything else when these people are working in a laboratory growing them but they're using up chemicals that could be considered bad for the environment you know nothing is perfectly safe what is a really good thing about a lab grown diamond the best thing about a lab grown diamond is the savings that's the bottom line. You're saving a tremendous amount of money. Tip number seven. What would I look for when I'm buying a diamond? I, I buy diamonds all the time. And a lot of times I'm buying four stocks so that when someone walks in, I have something to show them. So when you are buying a diamond, what should you be looking for? I'm gonna tell you some basics, but there's some very, very important things that are not basics. So pay attention to this one. The four C's, carat weight, which is the weight, cut, how well it's cut. You know, a lot of lab grown diamonds are triple X. Excellent, excellent, excellent. It's the best cut you can get. How is that possible? Because they get extra time because they grow it so fast. The color, the whiter a diamond is, the more of a reflection of colors it will present. The third one is clarity. Those three things, they are considered the basics, but here's what I'm getting to. The diamond should be certified. And this could be a natural diamond or a lab grown diamond. A lab grown diamond, through GIA or IGI. GIA is Gemological Institute of America. They started grading lab grown diamonds, which is great. Before that, it was IGI. So IGI is International Gemological Institute. It comes actually with a certificate number. The second is how was a diamond created? It's important to me. HPHT high pressure high heat is my favorite as a diamond dealer because with high pressure and high heat they tend to be whiter all right so now the second way to create diamonds is with the cvd process that is chemical vapor disposition why do i not buy chemical vapor disposition diamonds because typically they're not as white typically they're not as clean and I don't like the idea of them using even more chemicals to create something. Now, when you look at the diamonds that we sell, this is a good example, and it says IGI and the certificate number, and it says HPHT. That's the process that was used to create this diamond. There are fakes out there that, that are not certified. They're didn't, done with a different process. You give it to a jeweler to fix a prong, and when they heat it, it should be able to withstand thousands and thousands of degrees of temperature, and the stone breaks. And it's like, oh, it was supposed to be a lab grown diamond. It's supposed to be a natural diamond. It should be able to take the heat. Well, guess what? You got screwed. So make sure it's certified that it's a real, real lab grown diamond. Tip number eight, shape. What shape diamond does she like? Or what shape diamond are you interested in buying? I think it's about 80%, sometimes 78, sometimes 82, but let's say 80%. 80% of all diamonds on earth that are sold, lab and natural, are round. That's the most popular because a round is also called a round brilliant because all the facets are equally distributed. So it makes the diamond really sparkle really good. So if you get a different shape, you have to make sure it's cut properly. There are things that I'm going to talk about in a video that I'm making that's just about shape. You really, really, really want to subscribe if you want to learn more about this. So remember, if 80% of all the diamonds are cut around, that means all the other shapes are made up of, of that 20%. 
So there is a smaller percentage, but what's trending right now are ovals and marquees. They're nice because they make your finger look longer. Cushion cuts are also really, really popular. Pear shapes are coming in. There's actually over a dozen, you know, emerald cut, radiant cut. There's a lot of different cuts, hard shapes. Tip number nine, the big reveal. What would you buy? Me, Terry, the owner, 35 years in business as a jeweler. If I was making my first purchase or I'm struggling or I am a young man or woman and I'm looking to buy a diamond, I would buy a lab grown diamond. It's a stepping stone in your life and they get to have what they deserve, what they want, what they love right from the beginning. And then you can take that next stepping stone up to a natural diamond as you progress in life. Where to buy my diamond? An independent store is probably your best bet. If you have a family jeweler, your parents ask your parents. Um, you know, if you've got a, a jewelry store that you like and you've been to several times, and you want to give them a chance. Independent jewelers most likely are going to show you more than one. It's really important so that you see a, a number of stones. But remember, earlier when we talked, I gave you some price points. If their prices are a lot higher, then you should tell them what they should be charging you. Or give me a call. If we can help in any way possible to help guide you wherever you buy it, it's free. I'm not trying to take their business but I will try to help you any way I can. We can get you a diamond, we can sell you a diamond, we can take care of you any way you need. So all of our information is in the description below. And if you have a comment about a certain kind of diamond and you need to know, is this a good shape or is this a good information or what should I be looking for? Ask me, I'll try to answer any comments I get. All right, please subscribe to our channel if you wanna see some other stuff and hit the like button. Thanks everybody, have a great day.